Hi, my name is Danny, and this is Josh, and um, we are grad students here at NIU from the Department of Kinesiology and Physical Education. And so today we're going to talk about evading the grievers, the science of running. Congratulations, you've been chosen to be a maze runner. Don't worry, though, we've decided to give you an extra week just to train to make sure you're fully ready for this responsibility. Um, we want to make sure that you take advantage of this week, right? I mean, you'd want to be the, the fastest, the best, the one that's able to evade all the grievers and conquer the maze, right? So I foresee this situation. Halfway through your week of training, you face a dilemma. You want to go on your final training run of the day, so that you can be the best maze runner, but you're also starting to feel a little weak, a little worn down. So you're faced with this situation. Should you go on this final training run, or should you stay and rest and recover so that you can maximize tomorrow? You should have a handout um, with a maze on it. It looks something like this. Go ahead and pull that out. Each time you see a box that looks like this, that's really important information, and you're going to want to make sure you transfer it onto your worksheet so that you can solve this question. So you know if you have enough calories of energy left to make it through that final training run, or if you'll have to stop halfway through because you've reached exhaustion. So at the very top, you should write in the number 250. You have 250 calories of energy left. Josh and I are going to talk about energy expenditure during running. We'll also talk about footwear and change of direction. So three important factors you'll want to take into consideration. So to start out, energy expenditure is measured in calories. So the amount of energy that we use to perform a given task, that unit is calories. It's the same unit that we use to measure the amount of energy that we take in. So when we consume food or beverages, that energy is measured in calories. So energy in, energy out. Intensity and duration of exercise or of any physical task are the two primary factors that determine how much energy you'll expend. So the more intense the, the activity is, the more calories you'll use. The longer duration, whether it's a given distance or whether it's for a given time, um, so the longer the duration, again, the more calories you'll consume as you perform that task. So when we talk about running, the faster the speed, um, the more calories, the farther the distance or the longer the time, the more the calories. There are a few other factors um, that include running economy or your technique, so you want to be really efficient. You don't want wasted energy. Um, speed, stride frequency, as well as stride length, so how many steps you take per minute and how much ground or distance you cover with each step. And then lastly, air resistance. Air resistance can either increase the amount of calories you need um, to to run a certain distance if it's pushing against you, but it can also help you if it's pushing, um, pushing you along, along the path you're running. So, for this situation, you burn 105 calories per mile when you run at a constant speed of five miles per hour. So again, remember, if it's in a box like that, that's important information. But we know that this is just hypothetical, right? If you decide to go out this afternoon and go for a run at a constant pace of five miles per hour, this might not necessarily be true for you because um, we're not taking into um, those, those other factors into consideration, whether you run well or whether you're inefficient, your body mass, the air resistance. So that, this is purely hypothetical, though, for this worksheet. All right, so when you go out, in your training run, right? Don't picture yourself wearing Nike Freeze or Air Jordans. You'll be wearing combat boots, um, right? So who, who doesn't like to go for a run in combat boots? Um, what we did is we brought an individual into our human performance lab here at NIU to examine the differences between running in a typical running shoe and a combat boot. And Josh is going to show you some footage so that you can see a few of the differences that we observed in our lab. All right, how are you guys doing? Um, real quick, like Danny said, we brought a individual into our lab. Uh, we had her run on a treadmill, and we placed her in both combat boots and uh, a regular pair of tennis shoes to see the differences. 
right? Uh, I'm gonna go off the cuff a little bit. Can you guys all still hear me? Yes. All right, cool. Uh, what I want you guys to concentrate on, this velcro strip here and right here, okay? What you guys are looking at is how high is your foot clear, okay? Because the difference between walking, which I'm sure you guys wouldn't want to do in the maze because of all the obstacles, and jogging and running, which you will most likely do, is walking is not a flight, okay? Jogging and running is a flight pattern, meaning at one point, you're not in contact with the ground. Okay, so how do we run faster? How do we run better? All right, we cover more distance. Okay, you guys notice, it stopped here. Okay, in the tennis shoes, that kickback, that high kickback there that we can't really see here in the uh, combat boot is allowing her to stride out longer. That stride out longer is gonna cause her to cover more ground, therefore be faster, which I'm sure you guys would all wanna see, okay? Something else we observed. Look at the heel strike here, compared to over here. Do you guys see a difference? What is it? Huh? All of the foot. So in the combat boot, we see more of a heel strike, right? Compared to the tennis shoe, we see more of a forefoot and toe strike, okay? That toe strike, right, have you guys, if you guys have ever painted and uh, pushed a brush down, all the bristles kind of fan out, right? We have the same idea going on in the tennis shoe, okay? We land more on the forefoot and the toes, allowing our foot to basically spread out more. Compared to when we land on the heel, we get that heavy high impact in the heel. That heavy high impact in the heel tends to shoot up our calf muscle, our gastroc, into the hamstrings, into the lower back. That's why uh, if you guys go out running, who goes out running? All right, good, okay. If you guys go out running, where do you, if you run on pavement, okay, which is not good, okay? If you run on pavement, when you get back, you sometimes get that lower back pain, okay? That's due because you're hitting with the heel, okay? A uh, couple years ago, maybe some of the adults may remember a little bit more, running with ankle weights, okay? Not very common nowadays, why? We get this heel strike. We don't get to land more efficiently, which I'll talk about later, on our uh, forefoot, okay? Uh, I'm going to turn it back to Danny now. And, uh... All right, so just to reiterate and add a little bit too, so it, more energy is required to carry weight on the feet than that same amount of weight on the torso. So if you... Um, put combat boots on, which may be a little bit heavier than a running shoe, that's going to um, increase the amount of energy it takes to run in that combat boot more than the energy it takes to run in the running shoe. So that's something to take into consideration when um, you're trying to decide, do you have enough energy to run this last training run? Also, the cushioning properties and stiffness of the two shoes um, play a difference or play a role as well. The shoe that is more flexible um, requires less energy per step to overcome, um, to overcome that plant and push off. Whereas if you have a stiffer and more rigid shoe, then again, you're going to be using more energy per step um, to push off and, and take a, a stride. So here it comes, the important information. Running the maze in combat boots will increase your energy expenditure by 12%. So by 12%, you'll have a 12% increase in the amount of energy you expend. All right, the final component we'll talk about today is change of direction. So if you look at that maze in front of you, you can see it's, it's not quite running a straight mile, right? You'll be changing direction a lot. And as you can imagine, that influences how much energy you, ex energy you expend. Um, each time you change direction, that requires additional application of force um, to overcome the momentum of you running in that straight direction and then creating more force to change direction, whether it's a slight change of direction or a complete reversal of 180. So let's say I went out and I just ran 60 feet. 
maybe I'd burn five calories. Now let's say I still want to run 60 feet, but I put two cones out in front of me and they're 30 feet apart and I run down and then I run back. Uh, even though I just cover the same amount of distance, 60 feet, I'm going to be using more energy because of that change of direction. Likewise, if I add a third cone and place them 20 feet apart, running in the triangle, I'll have even more energy expended because I've now added an additional change of direction. Um, not only did we bring a participant into our human performance lab to look at them run on the treadmill, we also put them through an agility drill, both in running shoes and combat boots. And Josh will talk briefly about the differences that we observed. All right, uh, just heads up, that participant I got to come in was my sister. And if you guys ever have the chance to make a younger sibling do something, take advantage of it. She wasn't a fan, but I loved it. Um, again, here we can see, and I do better when I'm like looking at a picture, so. Again, no fight, all right? Here we have her in the combat boots, okay? She's doing an agility test, so she's running from one cone, changing direction, and going to another one. Here, again, we're in tennis shoes. Okay, can you guys see these uh, small red numbers? Yeah. Okay, here we were able to determine she's at a 65 degree angle. Okay, her, her absolute angle to the ground is 65 degrees. Compared to combat boots, which rise up higher on your uh, leg, not allowing you to get that ankle bent. Okay, here she was at 72. Okay. The closer, the more of an angle you have, all right, the more efficient you're going to be in running, okay? Lower to the ground. If you guys are, if you guys play sports, you should have coaches telling you get low, right? Stay low, okay? That's allowing your hamstrings to be put in an optimal position to fire and accelerate you, okay? Um, this next slide shows, um, shows our participant from the side. Um, and as you can see, she's more upright in, um, in her combat boots than what we would like to see is a more forward lean, like the picture on the right, again, for that optimal hamstring activation. So, oh, go ahead. And again, to get you guys through the maze faster, we want to build up that efficiency with what with, uh, which you're running with, okay? Your body is like a machine. Okay, think about it like a car. You got to go a long distance, right? How are you going to make that more efficient? You're going to change the oil probably. Fill up on gas, or in this case, you're being uh, well nourished, right? Maybe get it a wash, a little less air resistance. Okay, uh, like Dan was saying, here we see a greater angle compared to there, which it, it's basically the same spot. Here we have her starting out of a run. And she was standing straight up with those combat boots, okay? She's not going to get a lot of push off with that, okay? Here we have basically a world-class sprinter, right? And look at that difference in angle, okay? He's going to be more efficient because he's going to allow his hamstrings to fire more, produce more power, more force, more torque, right? Getting in places quicker, more efficient. All right, so as you run in your maze, for each change of direction, you'll use more energy. Um, and for your 90 degree um, change of directions, you'll expend an additional 1.3 calories. So each 90 degree turn. All right, to quickly summarize, so the three factors we talked about today that will influence your energy expenditure during this maze, um, or in general, the ener energy expenditure during running, um, the footwear, combat boots, will increase your energy expenditure, as well as change of direction, which will also increase your energy expenditure. So before we turn you loose on your um, worksheet, there are a few additional pieces of information you'll need. And the first is, if you look to the right of the maze, you see a, two dots and that dash in between. So that's the key, that in between each two dots is 80 feet. And, just so we're all on the same page, how many feet are in a mile? Thank you. Yes, 5,280. So make sure you jot that down as well. All right. So 
In this maze, you'll be running from point A to point D. No cheating, no running around the outside of the maze. You have to go through the maze, and you'll want to go the shortest route with the least change of directions, right, to make sure that you are maximizing your energy expenditure. Josh and I will walk around the room. Um, if you have questions, you can ask us, but good luck.